Now, with just six days until Election Day, America's largest newspaper chain, USA Today, and its 200-plus affiliates opting not to endorse a candidate. The following, the Washington Post deciding and the L.A. Times deciding not to endorse a candidate. In those cases, the owners of those newspapers decided to trump the editorial page and stay out of it. Vice President Kamala Harris not pleased and pointing fingers at former President Trump and his rich friends? It's disappointing, no doubt. Um, but the other piece of it is... It gets back to my point about who is Donald Trump, because he, he is the one, right, who is up for election with me. And, you know, he, he I think that some of your listeners, they know and others may not, which is that, look, it's billionaires in Donald Trump's club. About uh, What is she even talking about? Why is everything back to Donald Trump? Fox News contributor, Wall Street Journal editorial board member, Bill McGurn, former speechwriter for George W. Bush, uh, joins us now. You really blame Trump for the lack of endorsements? Yeah. No? Good, good morning, Brian. It's preposterous. Um, you know, obviously the owners decided that uh, they need to take this step. I, I have a lot of sympathy for the owners because the um, employees have just behaved preposterously. The idea that they decide um, the editorial page. But that said, Jeff Bezos talked about, you know, uh, having credibility by not endorsing anyone. Yeah. The real problem with like the Washington Post and other papers is not the editorial pages. It's that most of the news pages are also a continuous editorial for Kamala Harris. They're, they're, they're just perceived as bias. Yeah, and if you just look at the, the lead story, four of five are negative towards Trump. Media Research Group did a study. 80-plus uh, percent of the stories on Trump are negative. 74 percent of the stories are positive for Kamala Harris. How could that possibly be the case where someone is wrong eight out of every ten times and someone is right eight out of every, for every ten times? So your thoughts about where this race is right now, Bill? Well, my, my thoughts are pretty conventional. It's very tight. It does seem that Donald Trump has shifted in the last month, maybe two or three points in the national polls. In the battleground states, I think he's ahead in most states, um, all within the margin error by uh, one point. In Pennsylvania, I think he's ahead by uh, 0. 0.6 uh, points. So it's very tight there. Um, and, and we'll have to see an election right. night. But I think they're going to battle to the end. But I would say the momentum, and, and not just the momentum, the joy seems to be switching to Donald Trump. There's not much joy coming from Kamala Harris. Um, the Trump rallies and Trump meetings, they all seem pretty friendly. People are having a good time. And meanwhile, Democrats, we have Joe Biden, you know, uh, stepping on uh, Kamala Harris's speech, uh, calling half the country garbage, garbage and so forth. You have all these things, right. people worried about Kamala Harris. So, so Bill, I'm looking at uh, when the polls close in Michigan, 8 o'clock, Nevada is 10 o'clock, Eastern, North Carolina, 730, Pennsylvania, 8, 8. Most of the battleground states seems to be in the east. Does that mean we could get a verdict on election night? Yeah, it should mean it. Uh, I mean, first we should say... There's no excuse for not having the results within hours of the polls closing. Florida, a very populous state, does right. it. They went from hanging chads, you know, in Florida. 2000 to being a model in uh, 2020. So they should have them in. Pennsylvania, you know, they have disputes now gotcha. over mail-in ballots uh, heading to court. Uh, I think they're not allowed to start right. counting them until after the polls close. Th that's a problem, so though. That and guarantees well, a delay. Thanks so much, Bill McGurn of the Wall Street Journal. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.